Hi all, welcome to my channel on statistical analysis and in this tutorial we are going to look at the range and the quartiles that is part of the spread measurements we have been talking about earlier. So first of all we will see why the spread measurements are required. Now let's look at these uh, two data sets. We have set 1 and set 2 and if you do the calculations taking them as discrete data sets the mean of the set 1 is 30 and the median of the set 1 is also 30. If you look at the set 2 the mean is also 30 and the median is also 30. So if I just represent this data, mean and median alone, then in then anyone would think that these two data sets are similar. But actually they are not, but only taking the central tendencies, that is mean median only, we cannot uh, tell that tell that tell tell that these two groups are different so in order to say that these two groups are different we have to use spread measurements so now we will look at the simplest of the spread measurements that is the range range is the maximum value minus the minimum value so in the uh, set 1 the range is 50 minus 10 that is 40 and in set 2 the range is 32 minus 28 that is 4 now you can see that definitely there is a difference so if I only give the central tendencies, you might not be able to tell apart two data sets. But when you give the central tendencies along with spread measurements, you can definitely say those two data sets are different. So that's why we have to use the central, te central tendencies as well as spread measurements when you are representing data. Next, we will look at the quartiles and the interquartile range. So first of all, I'll explain uh, what is a quartile. So we have calculated the median, median is the middle value of the data set and quartile 1 or lower quartile is the one fourth value of the data set. And then you have the quartile 3 or the Q3, you call it upper quartile also, that is the three fourth value of the data set. So now here you can see that in this diagram median is in the middle and this is the Q1, one fourth value and this is the Q3, that is the three fourth value. And the difference between Q3 and Q1 is called the interquartile range and then this is the range, this is the total range of the data set. So these are the this is the sum of the spread measurement parameters we are finding in order to identify how spreaded the data set is. We have identified the different types of spread measurements we can calculate by now. And now we will uh, move forward and find out the spread measurements for different types of data sets. So we have our usual three data sets. First of all, we look at the discrete data and let's see how to find the quartiles of the discrete data set. Now we have uh, 12 football matches and their goals. Here it is given like that and you can arrange the data in order. So once you arrange the data in order, the calculations are same as finding the median but things are slightly different. So this is the equation to find the quarter. Okay, first of all we have to find the Q1 element as we have found the median element with the median we have to find the Q1 element. Q1 element is going to be n plus 1 divided by 4 if n is less than 50. It's just n divided by 4 if n is greater than or equal to 50. So in this case n is 12 therefore the Q1 element is going to be 12 plus 1 divided by 4, 13 divided by 4, 3.25 element. So now what we need to do is when we arrange the data in order we have to find out the 3.25 element of data. So here we have the third element, here we have the fourth element. So 3.25 should lie somewhere between these two. So we take this gap and we take part of that gap in order to find the 3.25 element. So this is how you can find it. So the lower quartile third element plus fourth minus third. Fourth minus third will give you the gap between these two data and then we have to get a quarter of that. So fourth minus third divided by four. In this case the third element is two, fourth element is three and three minus two divided by four you will get two plus one over that is 2.25. So this is how you can calculate the lower quartile for a discrete data set. And then similarly we can calculate the upper quartile for a discrete data set. In that we have to first find the Q3 element that is going to be 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4 if n is less than 50 and 3n divided by 4 if n is greater than 50. So again in this case n is 12 so you do, do the calculation like this 3 times 12 plus 1 divided by 4 39 divided by 4 you will get 9.75 element. So as I told you earlier you arrange the data in a line and we have to find the 9.75 value. So you here we have the ninth value that is 
5 and here we have the 10th value that is uh, 6. So we have to find the gap between those two and then we have to get the 0.75 value or the uh, 3 fourth value between the gap. And then uh, we proceed like this, Q3 value is 9th plus 3 times 10th minus 9th divided by 4. 3 divided by 4 counts because we want 0 0.75. So 9th, is, 9th value is 5 and 10th is 6, 6 minus 5 that is 1 into 3 is just 3, 5 plus 3 divided by 4 that is 5.75. So this is the lower quartile not the lower, uh, this is the upper quartile, actually I have made a mistake here, we, this has to be changed as the upper quartile, so the upper quartile value is 5.75. And now we can proceed and calculate the interquartile range, that is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So in this case the Q3 value is 5.75 and Q1 value is 2.25 and the difference is 3.5. So that is the difference between two quartiles. So that is 50% of the data from the total data set are having a range of 3.5. That is the meaning of the interquartile range. And if you look at the total data set, the range is 8 minus 0, 8. That is the total data set is having a, that is 100% of the data is having a range of 8. So that's how you can interpret the interquartile range and the range. Range is the range of the 100% of data and interquartile range is the range of the middle 50% of data. Now we will look at the discrete group data set in that we have this uh, 50 football matches and the goals in this table. We have the number of goals and the frequency and we have the cumulative group frequency table because as with the median we require the cumulative frequency. So here we have to find the Q1 element that is n divided by 4 that is 50 divided by 4 you will get 12.5. So now in this cumulative frequency we have to find the group which contains the 12.5 element. So here we have up to here we have 10 elements and up to here we have 21 elements. So you can see that 12.5 element will be in this group. Therefore, we can say that the Q1 element is 2 in this data set. And similarly, we can go on and find the Q3 data set. In the Q3, the Q3 element is 3 and divided by 4. In this case, that is 150 divided by 4, you will get 37.5. And I have to find the group which contains the 37.5 element. So here we have 26, 33 and 40 is here. So you can see that 37.5 is between 33 and 40. Therefore, in this group, we have the 37.5 value. So that will be 5. So the Q3 element in this case is 5. So that is how you can find the quartiles of the discrete grouped data set. So finally we have the continuous group data set. In this case we are taking this age of 60 employees in an organization and we will see how the quartiles are calculated. So here we have the data arranged in order and then we have to find the Q1 element first that is 10 divided by 4 and 6 divided by 4, we will get the 15th element. So as, we, as with the median we cannot find the exact value here so what we do here is we find the group which contains the 15th element. So you can see that up to here you have 14 elements and up to here you have 25 elements. So then the 15th element should be in this group from 30 to 34. So Using an equation like with the median, we can find the exact Q1 value. So this is the equation. This is the same equation we have used with the median, but the values are slightly different. Now we are finding Q1 and the lower boundary of the Q1 group and n divided by 4 and sigma fq1 means the cumulative frequency up to the q1 group and c and the frequency of the q1 group. And in this equation one thing you have to remember that is if the data values are less than 50 this has to be n plus 1 divided by 4 not n divided by 4. But in, in, the, in this question that we are taking we have data, 50, uh, data value as 60 therefore we can take it as n divided by 4. But just in case if you have a question where the data values are less than 50 you have to take this one as n plus 1 divided by 4 and then these are the explanations as to why we take it. Now we will substitute the data and then we will find the answer. So once you substitute the data here, in this group the lower value is 30, we substitute 30 and n is 60 divided by 4 and the cumulative frequency up to the q1 class is 14. We substitute 14 here into the into 4 that is the group width and divided by the frequency of the q1 class that is 11. So you do the calculation and finally you arrive at this q1 value and that will be 30.36. So that is the 
aqua one fourth element that you can get in this data set so in a similar manner we can get the q3 to get the q3 we do it as uh, 3 and divided by 4 here 180 divided by 4 that is 45th element so up to here you can see there are 37 elements and here you have 46th element therefore you can see that 45th element will be in this group that is 38 to 42 again we use the same equation but now with q3 Q3 is lower boundary of Q3 and 3 n divided by 4 sigma FQ3 that is the cumulative frequency up to the Q3 group and then FQ3 that is the frequency of the Q3. And then again here it is n as we are using data values more than 50 but in case if it is less than 50 just take it as n, n plus 1 divided by 3 n plus 1 divided by 4. Right and then it is explained here so we substitute the values here this lq3 value the lower boundary is 38 and n is again n3 n divided by 4 is uh, 180 divided by 4 and minus sigma fq3 is a cumulative frequency that is 37 we put it here and multiply it by 4 the frequency of the q3 is 9 so we divide by 9 so again you do the calculation and finally you arrive with the answer as 41.56 so that is the three-fourth of the data set value or the upper quartile so now we have talked about uh, the quartiles and the interquartile range and the range of the spread measurements now we are going to do the in the next tutorial we are going to look at the look at one of the most important spread measurements that is the standard deviation